Dory was a character that was released in 3.0 with the Simodo update, and in my opinion, I feel like she's massively underappreciated, and let me explain why. We're here with Dory and Masadori. Dory does have her weaknesses. Her ICD with her ultimate is rather scuffed, and she does require quite a lot of energy for a healer. And her damage, especially without a dedicated DPS Dory build, is pretty much non-existent. But in my opinion, all of these things are fine because as a healer, she fulfills her role pretty well. Let me show you how. Especially at C4 as well. She really pops off. Let me try my Boom, just like that, all of Lisa's health has almost come back. And boom, just like that, half of Lisa's ult has come back. And as long as Lisa was tied to the lantern, or rather to the lamp, she's uh, getting uh, her energy back. And it's not just Lisa, it's characters like Nahida as well. You're in for a little shot. Surrender and I'll be gentle. Come Oops. A little closer. Oh, lantern's gone. Uh, lamp's gone, so I'm not going to worry about that. Just like that. I'll quickly show you the build that I'm using on Dory, because seriously, I didn't really have to do a whole lot to make Dory this good. This is the build that I have for Dory. The main thing to focus on is the 28,000 health and the 208% ER. Of course, that's being achieved by a Sacrificial Greatsword and, of course, an ER Sand. Now, yes, I am using a Maiden and Beloved set, so that's why this build truly is nothing special. With regards to Dory's Constellations, they're all quite useful. Well, except for maybe Constellation 2 and Constellation 5. They're all quite useful for a pure utility Dory. C1 being extra hits that can proc Sack Sword or Fav Sword. Uh, C2 being just pure de DPS, so not really useful for my purposes. C3 being an ult upgrade basically means that you only need your ult at level 7 to get the maximum amount of energy regeneration by bringing it all the way up to level 10. C4 being additional healing at less than 50% health, which is how Lisa managed to get a whopping 11,000 healing just like that, as well as additional energy recharge for the characters that don't have more than half their ultimate ready to go. C5 being another sort of DPS constellation, and then C6 being potential for team-wide healing, which is definitely something that Dory doesn't really have at the present moment, as well as potentially some additional damage by having normals infused with electro damage. So that's of course going to be really, really awesome. That's essentially it. Her main strength right right being here. the healing right and energy regeneration that she provides. I think I'm more than enough to slot her in pretty much every team that I play, with the possible exception of a virgin team, like a somehow like a dilute copium virgin team, if you will. Uh, with the possible exception of those kinds of teams, I do find Dory to just be a fantastic addition to all of the teams that I like to play. Double Electro, double Dendro, Aggravate Shenanigans. Yes, she doesn't actually provide a whole lot of damage in that, but that's fine because she provides the energy that Lisa or Yaimiko or both need in those teams, so that's of course going to be really, really good. Uh, even in like some random Deluke teams that I play with like Deluke, Jory, let's say Sucrose and Milan. Oh yeah, I think she provides a lot of healing and a lot of energy regeneration for those teams as well because I do like to use their ultimates a lot, especially someone like Sucrose, where I kind of struggle getting her ult back. So that's of course going to be really, really good. And then of course there's various other teams that I play um, with various other Dendro shenanigans. And I do find her to be a very, very useful addition in those teams. Of course, you could also use her as a healer in Eula teams as well, so that's of course going to be really, really good. And really just capitalizing on the things that I've been talking about, her real strengths being the healing and the energy regeneration that will definitely make Eula teams also feel quite nice to use. You could also use her in Hyper Bloom teams where she becomes the Hyper Bloom trigger, because the thing about her ICD on her ult is that, yes, her ICD on her ult is completely scuffed if you're trying to do aggravation at against purely from Dory's ult, but if you try to do Hyper Bloom shenanigans with Dory's ult, it ticks really, really quickly, so you could potentially run Double Dendro, Tatalia, and Dory, and you can actually get quite a lot of Hyper Blooms happening, so that's, of course, also really, really good. I think Zajef actually demonstrated that, and I'm pretty impressed with it, so maybe one day I'll set up a full EM Dory and just pop off with 
type of room shenanigans for Dory. But that's going to be it from me. Let me know if you put all of this in the comments below. Do you use Dory? Let me know in the comments. I've seen some people run triple HP artifact Dory. I find that to be a little bit wild, but they've claimed that they can actually make it work. And I don't really have any reason to doubt them. So all power to them. And then of course you also have DPS Dory mates who just like to play DPS Dory. I definitely reckon if you're going to try and play DPS Dory, you should probably aim to get C6 as well. That way you can just do a lot of damage potentially with Aggravation shenanigans and her normal attacks because of course her normal attack animations are pretty hilarious to use as well. So definitely something worth checking out. But outside of that, hope you guys enjoyed this. If you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe for more Genshin Ember action. Next time I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye. I see everything. A sight to behold. Right here. Emerge. One with the forest. Right now. Emerge. Right here. Everyone hold hands. Watch this. Oh, it's a great deal. Share my knowledge.